they said. Lift those hands into this place. Welcome into this broken place. Uh, good morning, Mount Olive. Good morning. I can't hear you. I said, Good morning, Mount Olive. Good morning. If there was ever such a thing as being in the right place at the right time, you're in the right place and you're here at the right time. Amen. It's good to be here. My God is uh, so fit to give us another day of life. That's enough. To give God praise. That's enough to glorify His name. The fact that He allowed you to wake up this morning and see a brand new day. Hey, we're in for a, uh, a, a good time this morning. We're in for a beneficial time. There is a word uh, from the Lord. I know you're wondering why I'm holding this basketball. We're going to talk about this ball a little bit later on because some of you got to learn what to do with this ball. Some of you today, you come into this place, you come in worried, you come in dealing with the frustrations of life, you come in dealing with the heaviness that life has placed upon you. And this ball is going to teach us a lesson this morning. We're going to learn something uh, from this ball that we can do with our lives. The same thing we're going to do with worry. Many of us are dealing with it. Many of you online this morning, you've allowed uh, things in this world to, to bring you down, things in this world to make your head drop. We're going to teach you this morning how to pick your head back up. Now that's something to give God some glory for. You. And you are here with us this morning at the Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church, 12024 U.S. Highway 80. And we simply refer to the church here as the Olive. You are about to be blessed. We give you over to our choir and then to our deacon ministry.
Mount Olive is the church where Jesus is Lord. God's love is transferred through a ministry of teaching, preaching, praying, healing, and joyfully giving. Why spiritual gifts are being utilized. Furthermore, members are taught to value the word, true worship, and love for one another. As minds are renewed, lives are transformed, and life purposes are found. I will also be doing the birthdays from July the 10th to July the 16th. On July the 10th, we have Edward Hughes. On July the 12th, we have Orion Harris, Evelyn James, Edna Williams. On the 13th of July, we have Dwayne Porter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
God adds to the reading and hearing and doing of His Word. Thank you, uh, thank you, Reverend James. Good to see uh, those of you who have come out this morning. Uh, this morning's worship, uh, throughout our worship, we're going to be building uh, every aspect of our worship. We want to address uh, this subject of worry because we do understand uh, that it's affecting uh, all of us. None of us are exempt uh, from worrying sometimes about things that are happening in our lives. Over in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, I want to look at a verse and share that with you. 2 Timothy chapter 4, and if you'll go there with me, uh, John, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17, if you could put that on the screen for me. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 17. Paul here, he finds himself in a situation where many of us often find ourselves. You ever had everybody with you when you were up? You ever had everybody with you when things were going good? Uh, then, then the tables flip, and when the tables flip on you, you look around, and here you are by yourself, aren't you? Am I talking to anybody? Can anybody relate to that? Y'all got, got a bunch of Facebook friends, don't you? Uh, but when the trouble really hits, he found out those folks on Facebook not really all the friends. Uh, matter of fact, somebody said in, in, in a lifetime, you're blessed if you come across one or two good people Amen. and you can really call a friend. But here Paul was, he was standing before Nero, and when he was standing before Nero, the suffering was about to happen, and Deacon Johnson, he looked around and said, uh, in verse 16, I believe, he says, I couldn't find nobody. <laughs> That's a bad spot to be in when you can't find nobody. But verse 17, he says in verse 16, at my first offense, nobody stood with me. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. But somebody right can now. relate to what he just said. Yeah. He said, but all forsook me. All right. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. I've been there. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I don't know about y'all, but I've been there. Right I've been now. there where I thought the folk that I could count on, right. they were going to be there. Mm -hmm. But I looked around and found out I've been deserted. All right. That's a bad, that's a bad spot to be in. All right now. Now, this God that we serve, we, we're told that He's omnipresent. God has the ability to be wherever He wants to be. I used to think that whatever He got ready to be there. But I found out God already there. Donovan, listen to me. How is it that when trouble comes, we can see the trouble, but we can't see the God? All right, now. All right. Why is it that when things get rough, we can so easily identify the problem, but we have so much trouble seeing the answer? If God is omnipresent, if God is in our situation, say it for you. Why are we having so much difficulty mm -hmm. seeing Him? Maybe because we've been trained or we've become used to seeing, maybe we're identifying now more with the world. And how they do things. And we minimize God who's always been with us. So now when trouble comes, we start to magnify. We start to magnify what's against us. We start to magnify what we don't have. And we minimize who we do have. Right now. Paul, of course, Paul is Paul, and Paul says, hey, but I, I gotta tell y'all something. He said, when I found myself, Brother Thomas, in that spot, and I looked around, and I couldn't find nobody. Mm -hmm. He said, but what I did find in verse 17, put it back up there for me, John. In verse 17, for Robert Williams, when he says, what I found, he says, but, I like that word. He said, everybody else left me. Yeah. But. Okay. Now, he didn't, God, he didn't have to go find God. <laughs> He had to go search for God. Right now. He said, everybody else left me, but Good. the Lord stood with me. Stood with me. Mm -hmm. 
Can you see God standing with you? Mm. All right. Yes. When everybody else walks out on you. Are you able to see God not leaving you? <laughs> when everybody else has left you, can you see God not forsaking you? Hallelujah. When everybody else has forsaken you, yeah. then he tells you, I'll not leave, I'll never leave you. Yeah. And I'll never forsake you. That's right. Hallelujah. My Lord. Now God is here. Yeah. God is in the midst of whatever you're going through. But it becomes up to us to recognize that I got God's presence with me. Right. You know when I see people walking out that I thought would never walk out, I still got the Lord's presence. All right. Watch this here. Watch what God is doing. And what God does for Paul in this situation, that's what he's doing for us when we are in our situation. Because somebody's trying to find out, how, they are, how am I still standing? How am, I still, how am I still making it in the midst of everything I'm going through? Yes. He says, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. Yes. God is not just there taking up space. God is always actively working on our behalf. And he says, God is strengthening me. Because I'm dealing now with what I thought I would never have to deal with alone. I thought that I would always have company. I thought I would have, always have a support system. I thought that I would always could be somebody in my corner. But God, he says, stood with me and God strengthened me. Watch this here. God's not strengthening you just so you can go around and boast. All right. Talk about I'm better. Right. Say it, Pastor. He says, so that. The message, Lord, I'm amazing. Yes. Might be preached fully through me. Hallelujah. Uh, this, this God that does not gonna walk out on us, this God that's gonna be with us, this God that's strengthening us, he says, I'm gonna keep you, mm -hmm. but I'm keeping you for my purpose. Hallelujah. I'm keeping you for my glory. Yes. So now when you come out. This is what your testimony is going to sound like. Y'all ready for it? Had not the Lord been on my side. Had not the Lord kept me. Had not the Lord healed me. Now that is not for you. That's for somebody else to hear. A lot of times you want God to come through for you. Mm -hmm. And when God gets through coming through for you, yeah. not only do you stop worshiping God, mm -hmm. but you stop telling other folk about God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of you in the house right now, mm -hmm. there have been some things in your life, and some of you are watching online, there have been some things in your life that you and that you talk to God about, that been some things in your life that you poured yourself out to God, that been some times in your life and you said, God, I'm scared. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to face this thing. And God came through for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's what I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm trying to figure it out. How is it now? After God has done all this. When God didn't leave us, yeah. how is it now that we're making excuses and leave him? All right, right. now. Say it now. We're making we're making excuses to, to not wish it. Show right. thing come up now. Uh, it's like now, it's like now worship has become this. If I got time for it. I'm right now. I'm now. If I don't have anything else to do. I'm right now. Preach it now. Watch it. Uh, mm. how, how, how do you get there? You're the same one in the bed. You're the same one that cried out to him. How is it now that I got to see if I can put worship 
on my agenda. All right, now. See that? Hallelujah. How do you not wish of a God that stayed with you? And now we have allowed the enemy to come in and to tell the folk in the church what the church don't mean. All right, now. Or what's right. not important to the church. Yes, yes. You don't need to come. Come on. <laughs> and and, and I, know, I love online. Thank God that he provided these resources for us. But somebody watching online ought to be in the house. Amen. Amen. So, somebody watching online ought to be up in the house. Uh -huh. mm. yeah. I'm not saying there won't be times you can't come to the house. I'm not saying and, and, and on, online worship that we come to the church. If I can't make it in, at least I can catch it. And I pray that if you're online with us, that you're really online with us, and you just don't have it on while you're watching dishes and watching other, some television <laughs> show, I pray that you're tuning in so that you can really get blessed. Amen. Okay. Have mercy. We got to be careful. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm going to stand before this church and tell you, we haven't seen the worst of things. Oh, right now. Things are going down fast, quick, and in a and if you think that what we do here is not important, the enemy has gotten your mind. Amen. All right, all right. Amen. If you think you don't need to be around other brothers and sisters of Christ, if you don't think you need the encouragement from other folks, and sometimes that encouragement might not be what I give you from the pulpit, it might be from somebody that you're sitting near, somebody walking by you, and they say, baby, hold on, it's going to be all right. All right now. All right. All right. That's right. Don't you, not in this time, the Bible says as we draw, as the day draws closer, you're going to need what we do here more now than ever. I'm trying to help you because you're going to learn, you're going to learn in the message this morning where worry really comes from. And worry has overtaken the church. We got church folks in that word over there. My Lord. I want to share with you in a little while where worry actually comes from. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Come on, choir, let's sing. All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
dear Heavenly Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. Your Bible says, John 10 and 10 says, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You say, you come that you might have life, and that you might have more abundance. Father God, in such a time, lady, we need you. And we need you right now. Father God, we need you for one something. And we need you for another. Lord God, somebody is sick in this house. You are wounded for our transgression. And you are rude for our liberty. And the ten times I peace upon you and by your strife, we are here. Father God, in time, lady, we need you right now, Father. Father God, we can't do anything without you. We can't walk, we can't talk, we can't breathe without you, Father God. Father God, somebody needs you for a healing right now, God. Somebody needs you for a savior. Somebody needs you for a deliverer. Somebody needs you for be their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, we need you, Father. Father God, we can't do anything without you, Lord God. We need you for to teach how to love our neighbor. Teach you how to love our enemy. Teach you how to be a better person, Lord God. Father, we thank you right now, Father God. You say, you're my people. We just call by my name. And they may begin to humble themselves and pray. And seek my faith and turn from the evil and with the way. Father God, we thank you right now, God. Lord, I'm bowing down to you for help right now. We can't do anything without you, Lord. We need you right now to this power in your name. The salvation in your name. The deliverance in your name. The salvation in your name. The love in your name. Peace in your name. The care in your name. But it's also a power in your name right now to do anything and everything. But we thank you. And we praise you right now, God, because you're good. And you're worthy to be praised, Lord. We thank you right now for coming to your house, God, to give you glory. And give you praise and give you honor. And give you praise right now, God, because can't nobody do us like you. Can't nobody do us like you. Can't nobody save us like you. Can't nobody deliver us like you. Can't, no, can't nobody praise us like you. Can't nobody do what you do but us, Lord. We thank you right now for being God and being God all by yourself. Lord God, you bless Pastor White right now and bless your congregation in a mighty and a special way, Lord God. We thank you. And we praise you. And we magnify you. And we give you glory. And if you just say amen. And amen and praise God. Jesus died on, so they don't see me, they don't hear me, they just see and hear you. 
Father, we give you all the glory now. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I've noticed over the past month or so that there seems to be this fascination uh, with the attention that we have given to the increase in the gasoline prices. Many of us uh, have known a note of people who would go to the pump and after they pump, they feel a need to post, <laughs> showing us how much that tank of gas cost them. We are filling our tanks, but we're complaining. You're going to catch that tonight. Yeah. Around 2 o'clock in the morning. We've been filling our tanks, but we've been complaining. And I got to be honest, Sister Mary, I found myself doing the same thing. All right. Until my wife raised my level of consciousness. All right now. She says, Philip, why are you complaining when God has already given you what you need All right now. to make it? All right. She said, matter of fact, when you pulled up, All right. you already knew Say it now. that you were able She said, when you look around, though, it don't seem like the increase has stopped anybody All right. All right. All right. from buying gas. All right. She said, baby, what, instead of complaining, why aren't you praising God All right. All right. for making a way for you? I hear my grandmama saying to the deacon time. She said, boy, you're crying. But you got a loaf of bread yeah. under your arm. Yeah. All right now. All right. In other words, we've allowed our focus yes. to get off. We are watching the problem but we're missing the blessing. All right. Please understand me. I didn't show up this morning to suggest to you that we are dealing with situations that we are not facing obstacles that are indeed difficult. But my purpose this morning is to remind you that who's for us is greater than what's against us. Though we are facing some uncertain times, there is not anything uncertain about, as Reverend Adams would say, him. All right. It's amazing about all of the things that can cause us to worry. Yeah. And this is the problem with worry. Worry weakens us. Yeah. Worry robs us. But worry will also empty us. Mm. It adds to us while it's subtracting from us. Yeah. Watch this at the same time. Mm. It adds weight while it's subtracting peace. All right. It adds stress All right. while it's taking away joy. Mm -hmm. It adds hopelessness while it's removing happiness. Yeah. Right. And this is the thing. None of us are exempt from it. It affects the young as well as the old. It affects the rich as well as the poor. You got broke folks that are worried. You got rich folks that are worried. You got black folks that are worried. You got white folks that are worried. Yeah. We are worried about our bills. We are worried about our jobs. We are worried if we got enough money to make it. We are worried what the government's going to do. 
worried about our health, we're worried about our children, and if you're old enough, you're worried about your parents, you're worried about your marriage, you're worried about yesterday, today, and somebody sitting near you this morning is already worried about tomorrow. Right. Right. The truth is, Sister Susan Moore, we are all prone Things happen that just get the best of us. Problems arise, storms form. And the truth is, as I said earlier, I guarantee you there's somebody near you this morning who's worried about something. In church, but we're still worried. Some of us are dressed up, but we're still worried. That's okay. Because if worry wasn't an issue, All right. Jesus would have never addressed it. All right. All right. Jesus. Hallelujah. If it wasn't an issue, he would never talk about it. In verse 25, he says, Don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. He's not telling us that we ought not be concerned about our needs. But he's saying, don't let that stuff consume you. Don't, don't let that get, don't let that just overtake you. Don't, don't allow it to take center stage in your life. Don't, don't allow those thoughts to control you. Because what worry does, worry removes us from our element of protection. Because worry isolates us. And it makes us feel like we're in life all alone. It causes us to, to waste time. We stop moving forward. We, we really become stagnated. We, we stop advancing. And, and I guarantee you that if you find somebody who's worried, mm -hmm. that you're going to find somebody who's not moving forward. All right. Because worry leaves us out there all by ourselves. Some of y'all been asking, Pastor, why you brought this basketball with you this morning? I brought it with me because it reminded me of, 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 of old days down in Uniontown, Alabama. See, I, I grew up, I grew up a R.C. Hatch High basketball fan and I love watching the Bobcats play that basketball and and, and I, I noticed something though, Sister Josephine, I noticed that whenever they would play basketball, I don't know whatever happened, but Hatch had this unique uh, ability. They were always get down for some reason. They, they could be the better team, but they, it seemed like they wanted to always operate from behind. And, and, and I guess it made some of the better games because they always had to come back. But whenever they would get down, in my time, in my time, Coach Mason was down there. The thing about Coach Mason was, I guess the guys been around him so long, they already knew what he wanted them to do. He just looks at them, and he wouldn't talk to them across his legs. Because they would be down, and he would just cross his legs and fold his arms and just look at them. And they knew that they had to get about their business. And what they would often do when they would get down is that they had a play. And that play was called the press. What that was was they would press the other team. They would, they would apply pressure to the other team because they wanted to keep the other team from advancing the ball up the court. And their goal was to try to trap the player. Whoever had the ball, they would want to trap that player and get him separated from his other team. And when he became separated from his other team, it became difficult for him to handle the ball. And, and they would often strip the player of the ball. They would stop the player from advancing because they would trap the player applying the press. <coughs> My mom. Oftentimes, though, Hatch would find themselves because they were up. And the other team would apply the strength, same play against them. And the only way you could ever break it 
The only way you can ever stop it, the best way to stop it, was to stop it before it formed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You had to stop it. Am I right about it? That's right. Mm -hmm. You have to That's stop right. the press. That's right. You have to stop trying to be trapped before you get trapped. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to keep the ball moving. <laughs> In life, worry, that's what it does. Mm -hmm. It traps us. Yeah. And when it traps you, you alone. All right. And guess what? When a team starts to trap a team and they apply the press and it works, they never let up. They don't stop. The only way they stop is when the women got the ball, figure out how to break it. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. The one with the ball got to figure out how to break it. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back to that later. <laughs> That's what worry does. See, worry will keep you from scoring. All right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the other team will apply the press not because they're trying to strip the ball, but they're trying because they're trying to eat the clock. They want the other team to waste time. That's what worry does in our lives. It causes us to waste time. So the question now is, Pastor, how do I escape that press? How do I not allow that defense to hinder me from advancing the ball? The way I told you earlier that you break it is that you don't give it time to fall. You don't give it time to fall. That's how we break the press. We avoid the trap by not giving it time to form because if it does not form, EJ, you don't have to worry about getting trapped. Please listen. I noticed, Tracy, in life as well as in basketball, that once it forms, the only way you get away from it is that you got to do something to break it. Once worry gets you, you got to get away from it. You got to put some distance between you and it. In our text, Jesus is addressing how to handle what could become a problem. Now, the people of that time, they were concerned with making it from day to day. They, 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 they lived in what, what was called a hand-to-mouth area. Mm -hmm. They had to go out there and get it. They had to go out there and get the food. So they were always concerned with having enough food to eat. They were concerned with having water to drink. Can you imagine living in a time where you don't have a bottle of water? <laughs> you can't turn a faucet on. So every day they woke up, they needed to make sure they had some food. They needed to make sure they had water. They needed to make sure they had something to wear. Watch this. And Jesus knew where they were in life. He knew where to find them. In other words, he could relate to that situation. And aren't you glad that our God knows where to find us? Sometimes he finds us scared. Sometimes he finds us confused. Sometimes our God finds us lost. Sometimes he'll find us hurt. Sometimes he finds us overwhelmed and overcome. David says at best, he says, you can't outrun God. You can't hide from God. David says, where shall I flee from his presence? Where shall I go from thy spirit? 
David says, if I take a trip up to heaven, he's already there. If I make my bed in hell, David said, he's already there. Wherever we are, Mount Olive, listen, God is there. He knows where we are. Broken, but God knows where we are. Weigh it down, maybe this morning, but God knows where you are. Feeling like throwing in the towel sometimes, and yet God knows where we are. Sometimes we're sad. Tears running down our eyes. But God knows where we are. Sometimes we're lonely and sometimes we're alone. And yet God knows where we are. Listen, the people of that time, they were wasting time worrying about what they would eat, what they would drink, and what they would wear. They were preoccupied with these things. These things were consuming them. And while we really aren't overly concerned with food, water, and clothing, I got a question for you this morning. What are you preoccupied with? What's consuming you this morning? What has you trapped? What has your mind? What's controlling your emotional state? Since Jesus meets us where we are, what's worrying you? Bills? Children? Your marriage, your health, loss. What has removed you from your element of protection? What has you trapped this morning? Look at verse 24. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry. Watch this. Write this down. Worry is, a, is the currency of the enemy's kingdom. Worry is the currency of the enemy's kingdom. Some theologians suggest that there were some kings who found it very effective to keep their subjects in constant anxiety. If the people were worried about their lives, where their next meal was coming from, then perhaps they would be more willing to do what they were told by those in authority. The subjects would be at the beck and call of the king. If they wanted what the king controlled, they had to do what the king said. Word kept them in place. Fear kept the king on the throne. Matthew 6, 24 is not a separate verse, Mount Holly, from verse 25. It really is a continuation. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God <coughs> at any false object of worship. Like money. All right. Like wealth or anything other than God. Can I pay our verse, verse 25? He said, therefore choose the God who won't make you worry. That's all he's saying. You got to choose the God that doesn't make us worry. The reason the church is full of worried people is because the people in the church haven't made God the king. One God, G-O-D, brings worry. Our God takes worry away. One God, G-O-D, makes you worry. Our God, one God, G-O-D, makes you worry, small g, to keep his kingdom. 
Our God, capital G-O-D, exalts his power and superiority by taking away our worry. Look at verse 26. He said, look at the birds of the air. All right. For they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Look at verse 27. Which of you, by word, can add one cubic to his stature? All right. Write this down. Worry won't change the situation, but it may hurt you. It, it won't change your situation. He says in verse 27, which of you, by worry, can add one cubit to his stature? See, 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 H. Spurgeon says, it is a small matter whether we are tall or short, and yet all the worry in the world could not make us an inch taller. It's really a small matter, isn't it? Whether you're tall or you're short. But all the world, worry in the world, it won't make you an inch taller. True. It's not going to change your situation. In verse 27, he asks, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Look at your neighbor and say, worry won't change a thing. <laughs> Jesus says, worry does not add any value to our lives. Amen. And when something does not add value, the smart thing to do is to leave it alone. He put something on our mind. He says, think about it. And I want you to think about it this morning. What has worry ever changed in your life? The only thing that worry does is hate that hurts the one who's worried. Please understand, he, he, he isn't suggesting that we don't do anything. But he's saying worry is not what we ought to be doing. Why? Because worry is the currency of the enemy's kingdom. But worry does not change a thing about our situation. In verse 26, he says, God has the details of our lives already worked out. Uh, in verse 26, he says, look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they are? Yesterday, I had a, sl a slide put on the screen. It's not working. Uh, but yesterday, uh, we had a pastoral meeting uh, here in Demopolis, and after I left, uh, Pastor Coleman uh, uh, made it uh, uh, and this is good, they're baptizing the day over at uh, Pastor Coleman's church in, 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 uh, in Utah. But they needed to use some gowns. And so we stopped by, he, he and I uh, stopped by. I was originally scheduled to stop by here, pick up the gowns on my way to the meeting. Uh, but I was running late, and God had me run late, I found out later. Uh, and so after the meeting, he trailed me back here, pushing, and we got out the car. And I noticed something about the parking lot. I didn't, See, there's anybody else in the area, but I saw it in, Gal in Galilee, the Mount Olive's parking lot. The parking lot was covered. And I, I thought it was pollen or something, but it was these, this yellow substance. And so we walked into the church and walked around and talked for a little while. And he got the robes. We walked back out. And I know Pastor Coleman is an outdoor person. I said, man, what's that on the, on the, on the, on the pavement? He said, oh, it's a willow fly. I said, a willow fly? I said, what's a willow fly? He said, man. He said, sometimes I go fishing on the lake out there, the lake come, and the fish love them. I said, wow. And so after he pulled out, we got in that car. Before I pulled out, I Google willow flies. Because <laughs> I want to know something about willow flies. Because I'm putting on I got all these willow flies out here. And, and I said, see, God, God, God got a purpose and time for everything. He right. looked at the details of your life. That was the reason I couldn't stop by here on my way, because Pastor Coleman went with me. I had to have Pastor Coleman with me because if I didn't know I had Pastor Coleman with me, I never would have heard the word willow fly. I had never heard the word willow fly before. <laughs> so I Googled it. Smoke. Help us. <laughs> and Google said, 
But not only do the fish like it. Y'all ready for this? The birds love it. All right, now. Say it, That's all right. Jesus said, look at the birds. They don't sow. They don't reap. They don't gather in the barns, and yet your heavenly Father That's all right. I said, I hear you, God. I hear you, God. I looked everywhere around and I didn't see no little fire, but it might have fallen out. I said, I hear you, God. He said, Why I got you? Tell them nerds, I got them tomorrow. Because if I take care of a bird with a little fire, don't you know I take care of all their needs? Of winning or breaking the press. Now, I, 
I, and, and back home, if you start bragging up who the best basketball player is, you get a big debate, and you got all these names, and everybody got, I, I can only talk about the ones that I know. But the ones that I know during my time, uh, there was a guy, uh, he was in, uh, he was in Deacon, uh, Deacon uh, uh, George's class, he was on the team. I think Deacon George, he was on the team too, though, wasn't he? But that guy with you, that guy, I didn't even know how he was going. <laughs> You already know what Cousin Mason told me y'all to do. He said, put the ball in Charlie's hand, didn't he? Charlie North got that ball. I'm going to be Charlie for a second. They're trying to trap you, but you got to put the ball in Charlie Northley's hand. Because you knew if you put the ball in Charlie Northley's hand, you had a better chance of getting up the court. Right after my time, there was a guy, uh, and I ain't trying to leave nobody out, but there was another guy. His name was Metric Body. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And in my time, they would put the ball in Metric Body's head. If they try to trap you, you get the ball to Metric Body, because Metric Body is going to bring the ball up the court. A little bit later on, I ain't trying to leave nobody out. I ain't trying to, I know some of y'all got some kid folk that was on the team. I ain't messing with nobody. But a little bit later on, that came a guy by the name of Frankie Sullivan. And if you ain't coming, you just put the ball in Frankie Sullivan's hand, and the ball, you'll be all right. Right now. Go ahead, but can I share something with you now? When you try, when, they, when word is trying to trap you, you ain't got to put the ball in no man's hand. But what you got to do is get the ball out of your hand. And you got to put the ball in the Lord's hand. So when you feel like you're trying to get trapped, you got to what? Get rid of the ball. You got to get the ball out of your hand and you got to put the ball in the Lord's hand. And that's all that some of y'all got to do this morning. Because the enemy can the enemy has been trying to trap you, the enemy has been trying to discombobulate you, the enemy has been trying to steal your joy, and it's all because you holding the ball. What you gotta do? Get rid of the ball. Put the ball in somebody's hand that can handle what the enemy is trying to stop you from. I heard somebody say, but if you're sick, you're fine. And if you're not, the door will be open. That's what God always, that's all he's asking you to do. Start worrying. But you've got to start seeking. Get the ball out of your hand. I know we're dealing with all kinds of issues. I know the enemy has been pressing on some of you real hard. I know you turn television on, you get depressed. You, you watch the internet, you get depressed. You look at Facebook, you get depressed. Word is, a, is no more than a currency of the enemy, of the enemy's kingdom. As long as he got you worried, he got you trapped. He got you trapped. Because now you're looking to him. He's never going to stop you from word. Because worry keeps him on the throne. He wants you to worry. So you keep turning on CNN looking for an answer. You, you keep looking at Washington hoping what they're going to do. You pray the Supreme Court makes a ruling that you like. He got you worried. He ain't got no joy no more. He's taking all that from you. He got you trapped. And the only person that's being hurt is you. The only one that's being hurt is you. God says, my kingdom is not like that. These are now separate verses there together. My kingdom is not like the world's kingdom. I don't want you to worry. Matter of fact, I'm going to take worry away from you. But you got to live in my kingdom. I believe there are at least five folk in the house this morning. To know you'd be better off if you live in the Lord's kingdom. That's all he wants to get you to, my honor to his kingdom. He said, but you seek my you seek my kingdom. You seek me. My ways. And when you start seeking my ways, that worry gonna leave you. I can decrease your worry. But you got to let the ball go. Oh, my church is open. If you're here this morning, if you're here this morning, and God has put upon your heart that 
you need to enter into a personal relationship with him, we open the door of this church just for you. The Bible says all you got to do is believe. Believe in your heart that what Jesus accomplished on the cross was enough to save you. The Bible says if you do, you're saved. You can come as our choir sings. The door of this church is open. If you've already done that, you've already professed that Jesus is Lord. But you know that this place, God has spoken to you, and this is the place where you can be fed in this season. The door is open for you to come by experience. Please come. The door of our church is open. Would that be one this morning? Step out on faith. Let that ball go. Step out on faith. Oh, yes, he is. Let it go. Get that ball out of your hand. Come to him this morning. someone that, that needs or could be benefit, can benefit from the class, don't just tell them about it. Offer the brain. Sometimes people need that little extra push. Uh, some of you got family members and friends that are going through bereavement or are just having difficulty dealing with the loss. Yeah. Bring them out to the class so that they can also uh, receive help. Now in the foyer of our church, we do have some of you all have been asking about our t-shirts. We have t-shirts. Uh, you can sign up for the ones that you want. The prices are on them. There are three different choices choose uh, and just have the church's uh, logo on it. Uh, but stop by and see Sister Jemison on your way out. Any first time attendees this morning? First time worshiping with us? And if I'm not going to make you stand, I just want to know if it's your first time here. Amen. If this is your first time here, stop by our welcome center. we got a gift for you as you, uh, as you, exit, as you exit the building. All right. That, that's all the announcements for Today, if uh, not, let's stand to be dismissed from this place. Deacons, we need to meet shortly after service. Mm -hmm. Members that are out. Uh, the mother of our church 
uh, she's worshiping with us online. I want you to say good morning to Sister Minnie Scott right now. Good morning, Mother Scott. Amen. Sister Dorothy Jones is home recu uh, recuperating. She had surgery. She's doing better. Glad to see her daughter back with us. Say good morning, Sister Jones. Brother Nelson Phillips is not with us. He's He's been transported trans uh, to Tuscaloosa for rehab, and he's there, but he's online with us this morning. Good morning, Nelson. Now say good morning, Sister Janice Walken. She's at home, and uh, today I want to say good morning to her. Good morning, Sister Walken. Now, to all of our other members who are not here, Joanne, everybody else, y'all just say good morning to them. Uh, we'll say good morning to everybody now. Hey, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Do not worry. Do not worry. God, has God has worked out, worked out the, details the details of your life. Now y'all go and y'all be blessed.